Good morning, church. It is so great to be with you today and to get to spend this time and talk about our Lord, but also to sing some fun songs. I have picked out a fun one today that uh, I've known pretty much all my life uh, called uh, Michael Row the Boat Ashore, and I think you probably will know that too. And what made me think of it is the, uh, the worship sermon series that we're doing is based on a Matthew 14 account of uh, the disciples going out ahead of Jesus on the lake and uh, Jesus is off praying on the mountain and uh, a storm comes up. And so there's this idea that when Jesus comes out to them that he shows them grace and concern and that the, the, the wind has died down and he gets in the boat with them. And this idea, this image of being in the boat with Christ is one that I, I really like. And it's a theme that was popular a long time ago and, and still is today, especially with the slave communities uh, in the United States before the Civil War. And this song, Michael Row the Boat Ashore, is believed to be written by one of those slave communities in uh, South Carolina. And so it was known throughout as a folk song. And in 1961, this song was recorded and became a surprise hit for the, uh, the Highwaymen, who was a folk quintet that was formed in 1958. And they were freshmen at the Wesleyan College in Middletown, Connecticut, when they... Uh, when they got together and they recorded this song, they actually thought it was just kind of a standard folk song and they put it on the B side of the album and it became the number one song and they ended up re-releasing it as a title of another album, The Best of the Highwaymen with uh, featuring uh, Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore. And uh, if you have grew up singing folk songs like I did, you probably know all the words and you probably know verses that I don't have here today. But it's one of those songs that was recorded by many, many different people. The Weavers are the first ones that I can find who recorded it in 1957. And Harry Belafonte recorded it in 1962. And Pete Seeger in 1963. The Smothers Brothers, if you remember them, 1964. And, of course, Peter, Paul, and Mary recorded it and had it on a standard, a part of their standard repertory. And so this, um, the story of the Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, is kind of a conglomeration of a variety of images about what it might be like to, when you go to heaven. And it's loosely based on some of the prophecy from the book of Daniel. And this idea that, uh, that this archangel Michael is piloting a boat that then takes us to the other side and to heaven, which is not completely scriptural, but it actually uh, kind of gave a lot of hope for the people who were enslaved. And so this idea of suffering in this world as a slave is one that um, we have, would have a hard time understanding because we're so... Um, we're so caught up in really about human freedom and our dignity. But this is uh, this idea that the only relief from suffering that they would get was if they, when they died, they would be transported to heaven. So this image is one that's very powerful for deliverance, not only for people in the slave times, but also in our days today. One of the scriptures that picks up much of this thought is from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. It's kind of an image of the promised land. It's God talking to the people uh, during their journey uh, in the wilderness to uh, promising them of the, pro of, the, of the land to come. So let me start with verse 8 of Deuteronomy 11. Keep then this entire commandment that I'm commanding you today so that you may have strength to go in and occupy the land that you are crossing over to occupy so that you may live long in the land and that the Lord swore to you to your ancestors, to give them and to your de their descendants a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land that you are about to enter to occupy is not the land of Egypt from which you have come, for you, where you sow your seed and irrigate by foot like a vegetable garden. But the land that you are crossing over to occupy is a land of hills and valleys, watered by rain from the sky, a land the Lord your God looks after. A great image of the promised land and how this is a land that God had prepared for them and how they, were, they had this opportunity to enter into the promised land as they continued to follow God's lead in their lives. So let me sing for you, Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, and I encourage you to, to sing out and have some fun with this. Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, Alleluia, Michael Boat ashore, Alleluia. Sister, help to trim the sail, Alleluia. Sister, help to trim the sail, Alleluia. My 
Michael rode the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael rode the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Jordan's river is deep and wide. Hallelujah. Milk and honey on the other side. Hallelujah. Michael rode the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael rode the boat ashore. Hallelujah. River Jordan is chilly and cold. Hallelujah. Chills the body but not the soul. Hallelujah. Michael rode the boat ashore. Michael rode the boat ashore, hallelujah. Michael's boat is a music boat, hallelujah. Kills the body but not the soul, hallelujah. Michael rode the boat ashore, hallelujah. Michael the boat ashore, hallelujah. The trumpets sound, the jubilee, hallelujah. The trumpets sound, the jubilee, hallelujah. Michael Rowe, the boat ashore, hallelujah. Michael Rowe, the boat ashore, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I encourage you, if you find yourself metaphorically out in the middle of a lake in a storm blowing you every which direction, whether your life is uh, on, on course or being blown off course by the many different pressures around us, I pray that you sense the presence of Jesus Christ and his guiding light through his Holy Spirit in your life today and each day thereafter. Peace be with you and go, go today. Bye-bye.